This is figure 6.3 dealing with the spatial distribution of religions. Um, it compares the universalizing religions with ethnic religions around the world. The three most important universalizing religions are Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. So let's look at Christianity first. And let's look over here at the Western Hemisphere. So as you see in the Western Hemisphere, it's almost all Christian. And in South America, it's almost all Catholic. And in Central America and Mexico, it's almost all Catholic. And then in North America, it's a combination of both Catholic and, and Protestantism. Over here in Europe, we see there is a divide. In Southern Europe, we mostly find Catholicism. In Northern Europe, here's Germany, here's the UK, Scandinavia, we find the Protestant. In terms of Eastern Orthodoxy, we would find that in Eastern European countries right here, and then look all the way across the Russia. So all of that would represent the Eastern Orthodox. Now in terms of Islam, we see that all of North Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, Turkey, Iran, Central Asia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and let's not leave out the Southeast Asian countries. This would be Indonesia, this would be Malaysia, this would be Bangladesh. So all of these represent Muslim countries and actually, if you took Indonesia, Pakistan, um, Bangladesh, and India, that would be about half of the world's Muslims. So actually, only less than 20% of world Muslims live in Arab countries. Now remember, we talked about back in the language chapter who an Arab was. And we said that not all Arabs are Muslims and not all Muslims are Arabs. So remember that Iran is not Arab. It's an Indo-European language family, the Farsi. And remember that Turkey is also not Arab. It has an Altaic language. So in this case, what we see here is that the North Africans, the Arabian Peninsula, Turkey, Central Asia, they are Sunni Muslims, whereas in Iran, they are Shiite Muslims. Also, you would find Shiite Muslims in the southern part of Iraq, and Azerbaijan. This division between the Shiite and the Sunni Muslims is a split over the line of succession. And so way back, Ali was a cousin and son-in-law of Muhammad. So he led the Shiite sect and the other 83% follow the Sunni sect. So this sectarian divide is a big deal and you see what's happening with the war in Syria. So Iran, with Shiite, is helping the Assad regime. The Assad regime is an Alawite. It's a small offshoot of a Shiite branch. So m most of Syria is a Sunni Muslim, except Assad and the ruling family are Shiites. And so the Iranian government is helping him, whereas Saudi Arabia and other Sunni uh, countries are funding the rebels because they're, they're Sunnis. In Iraq, you have three different sects. You have the Kurds in the north, and you have the Sunnis and the Shiites um, in, in the rest of the country. When Saddam Hussein was in control, the Shiites were relegated to a third state status. Uh, they were repressed and um, not given any opportunities. Now that they are in control, they're sort of doing the same thing to the Sunnis. So now that the Shiite sect is in control in Iraq, um, the, the Sunni Muslims feel um, disenfranchised. And just one last time, remember that Indonesia down here is the most populated Muslim country in the world. They've got a population of around 200 million and, and most of them are um, Muslim. In, in terms of the third universalizing religion would be Buddhism over here in the green. And we see that that encompasses most of East Asia and Southeast Asia. 
and you would find a lot of these countries would be an amalgam they would consider themselves to be buddhist uh, in japan they would also simultaneously consider themselves to be shintoist and probably also confusion and they don't find any uh, contradiction with that so it's no problem in terms of the biggest ethnic religion down here in south asia with uh, uh, india we would have hinduism and just to round out the continents we see here in Africa would be a, a combination of different religions, uh, many of them animism, animistic, uh, very much related to uh, the land, animals, and so forth. And so overall, what we see here with the distribution, the spatial distribution, remember geography deals with state spatial distribution, so we're looking at where different religions are located in space, and what we see is that the Christian religion is the most widely distributed, uh, around 2 billion adher adherents, and Muslim, Islam, would be the second biggest universalizing religion with about 1.2, 1.3 billion adherents. Um, Remember that what we're dealing with here is religion, and that is different from language. When we talk about being an Arab, that's language. When we talk, being, talk about being a Muslim, that's religion.